a thread by Pat Scopoliti. 21 December 2020, hashtag MAGA analysis, hashtag he might be right. A shocking theory, he might be right. Today, we'll finish General Mack's interview with Sarah Westall here at Twitter at Westall underscore Sarah W. I've made it up to 2651 in notations and responses so far. From brighteon.com, link in the thread, General McInerney, this is not fraud, it's cyber warfare, Pat continues. As a student of how studying works, I was deeply surprised by yesterday's work. The interview up on one screen, my thread up on the other, I was able to start and stop comfortably. I could look up sources by pausing the interview. I enjoyed it. That shocks me. Mind, I'm not saying I did a good job. It was the first time I've ever done that sort of commentary in real time, research simultaneously. It's all kind of weird to me. You know, old dogs, new tricks. Not easy, but so much fun. From then till now, however, I've noticed an explosion of confusion in our nation over what's actually happening. We're in a fantastically sensitive moment in our history. Whose voice do we listen to now? This is a tremendous question. Whose voice? Most people don't care as much about theory as I do. I am a theoretician. Some fighting part of me knew back in 2016 that almost no one was working off a very specific theoretical base. Maybe Trump was right. Allow me to shout, maybe Trump was right. That is a theory. I can't linger to reminisce about what that meant then because it's so important right now. The same theory and its corollaries are critical for what we, where we are right now. There's a somewhat surprising additional concept underlying my theory. Respect. Before I was able to surrender to my desire to support Trump, I had to complete my research. So I reread The Art of the Deal, more on that another time, and then ordered every book he'd written. Funny thing, before that, I didn't even know he was a best-selling author. So, let me ask, how many of Trump's books have you read? Don't take that as a challenge, please. I only ask in order to illustrate how my theory works. If you joined me in my theory, you'd buy a Trump book and then ask, what if maybe Trump was right? Having employed this theory since 2016, I can tell you that even for me, I am a gigantic Trump supporter, obviously. The answer to the question does not always come out yes. Trump was far from always right. I have many major disagreements with my leader. What I don't do is publicize my disagreements. I don't attack the man whom I support. It was obvious to me that he had plenty enough attackers. He had no need for my additional input to those attacks. My hope was always to be a friend, a true friend. From the moment I formulated the question till this very day, I have yet to regret my theory. I look at every situation through that lens. No need to select any specifics. History is moving too fast. I purport that assuming Trump might be right is the right mode now. And that brings us up to the generals, specifically General Flynn and General McInerney. Let me speak about General Flynn for a moment first. He was always 100% innocent. As such, he is a specimen of America's decline. Innocence is not presumed. The presumption has died. Dive into the strategic issue with me. General Flynn has had back then knowledge that obliterates the power of the cabal. Need a reminder? Listen again to this February 1st, 2017 press conference. Link in the thread, cspan.org. In all of the tactical brouhaha, it seems no one ever asks the strategic question. Why was Flynn taken out back then? Why is he so dangerous today? 
Knowing where the skeletons are buried is but a weak tactical flash. His real danger is strategic, not tactical. From the moment the deep state took Flynn out of his rightful position as national security advisor, my theory shifted. It went from Trump might be right to Flynn is 100% innocent. Deep state is guilty. Flynn is innocent. That is what guided me in those dark days. Count it up so far. One, Trump might be right. Two, Flynn is 100% innocent. And then there's General Thomas McInerney. Could it be? Might he too be right? Here's a single point. Martial law. Add the Insurrection Act. Could it be that General Mack is right? If you ask Kate Scopoliti, you'd feel her anger and fury. She'll tell you General Mack is right. Call down martial law now, she says, and address the treason in America. In yesterday's work, I couldn't help but notice and comment on that fact that General Mack keeps calling out treason. Treason, treason, treason. He sees it everywhere. Oh, what a quack. Or maybe he might be right. Turn now to the question of debate itself. It holds underlying a fundamental principle. You might be right. Yes, I disagree with you now, but you might be right. I might be wrong. That theory, your opponent might be right, is the key to honest debate. If you are 100% sure your opponent is wrong, then step away. Do not debate. A true debate requires my theory. The other guy might be right. If you can't imagine that, then don't debate. Focus your energy elsewhere. Don't debate. Here's another example. Trump tweets are offensive, but blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. You may be offended, and I'm okay with that. But there's an error in your theory. You think you should judge his tweets by yours or by normal standards. Hogwash. 24 hours a day, Trump is fighting a war. His tweets are one of the most important strategic assets he has in fighting that war. If you wish to read his tweets rightly, my theory is required. Maybe Trump was right, that is. Maybe he should have tweeted exactly what he did. The principle is general. Why would you listen to anyone at all speak if there was no possibility he might be right? It may be a definition of listening that when not speaking, you imagine that the speaker might be right. I'm of this hard school. Let me illustrate. You and I are on the phone and you're speaking, and I'm silently but attentively listening. You may be assured I'm imagining that you might be right. If I cannot imagine that, I'll interrupt you and I'll tell you, I can't hear you right now. You're not cutting through. So... I propose that the very act of listening itself demands the presumption of possible rightness. I like that, the presumption of possible rightness. If there is no such presumption, why listen at all? Or why pretend to listen when you're not? As we turn back to finishing General Mack's interview, it is precisely that assumption, the presumption that he might be right, which must guide us. Let me say it at the big picture level. General McInerney might be right. Our corrupted government might require all the steps we've logged from his guidance in order to restore America's governing integrity. He might be right. Sarah tells us, sorry, we return to the interview at minute 2651. 
suspend the Electoral College and the inaugural date. Why? The Founding Fathers could not have imagined cyber warfare against us from within. It shall not stand. Sarah Westall tells us that this election's data was a landslide beyond the presidency, turning the House back and strengthening the Senate as well. This was a fixed election across the boards. Quote, I don't believe the current actions the president is on are severe enough. The path I've outlined shows the American people that we mean business and we'll get to the bottom of this, end quote. There. That's the point. It's a lost principle. Truth and justice often demand severity of execution. Anything less conveys equivocation. General Mack might be right. That theory is simply critical. He might be right. We cannot afford to accept this, and the advisors must not counsel to come back in 2024. It won't happen. Take these serious steps. The support of the American people is behind this. Martial law is the real answer. It has to be this severe if we're going to get control and expose all these things to the American people. He will save this nation. They're going to call him a dictator, but he has the tools and must use them. Our enemies, China, Russia, Iran, are all delighted with the current election. Our internal censors censorship feeds our enemies' desires. The current situation is a color revolution. This censorship means totalitarianism. All this must be disallowed by us, the American people. Our president must change this. The courts will not uphold Trump, state or federal. What about the support around Trump? None of the D.C. leaders are giving Trump the support he needs. So we must rise up for Trump ourselves. Letters, emails, all our social media. We must support Trump in the steps that General Mack has outlined. This treason must be stopped and all the steps listed must be taken. Treason must be disallowed. Rise up. America. Sarah now lays out her brilliant set of three options. You are either one, a traitor, two, a coward, or three, a patriot. You have to make a decision. General Mack writes this down. That's the choice. The best way to move forward is to send messages to White House, senators, and House members. What about the corrupted Supreme Court? That's the reason military tribunals are required. Are they traitors, cowards, or patriots? It's time to stand up. Where should people go to learn more? The Citizens Commission on National Security, ccnationalsecurity.org. What might General Mack be right about? We've listed 10 steps he urges with bold strength. We've walked through all the logic behind them. We'll conclude by listing out the 10 steps again. And I'm asking, can you consider he might be right? I sure am. General Max, 10 steps. During an interview concerning voter fraud and cyber warfare during the election, two, he called on President Trump to declare a national emergency, three, use the Insurrection Act, four, declare martial law, five, suspend habeas corpus, six, set up military tribunals, seven, suspend the Electoral College, vote for president and vice president on December 14th, and the presidential inauguration on January 20th, eight, claiming the 2020 presidential election is being stolen from Trump, and nine, treasonous parties should be arrested and charged, and 10, a full investigation must be done by President Trump. But can America make the tough call? Do we have the moral fiber to do what it takes? Perhaps this can get done with nicer means. Maybe General Max counsel is more stringent than these times require. But if we fail to hear him, and we look back one day saying 
He was right, after all. Then, well, maybe we should consider that right now. Maybe he's right. I will be the greatest president that God ever created. 